So I get asked pretty often, what do I need to do to clean and condition my leather? So I thought I'd do a side-by-side -side comparison of five of the random uh, leather conditioners, oils, and balms I have just floating around the shop. So the first leather we're testing is a straight veg tan I got from uh, Bill from District Leather. He worked with Wicked and Craig to create his own tan. It's basically just a bridal leather. It's, it's a little bit drier and a little um, harder to wear in than most of uh, the other leather leathers we have. The next one is Horween's Dublin. This is another veg tan, but um, it's got a lot more fat worked into the leather, so it's a lot more supple and it has a lot more oils and um, a lot softer texture to it. And then we've got a uh, dark brown Chrome XL, which is a combination tan. It's, it's chrome tanned and veg tanned. Um, it's a really dark leather and it's really, really soft. And it has tons and tons of fats and stuff worked into the leather and a black Chrome XL. So the first one we're gonna test is mink oil. I have this mink oil left over from when I was a wildland firefighter. Everyone would treat their boots with mink oil. So I just have tons of it floating around. The next one we're gonna test is saddle soap. This is a really, really popular leather cleaner. It does a really good job of conditioning and I've used it for um, a really quick and easy way to finish the sides of leather straps. Next is just some Aussie, 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 I don't know, leather conditioner. It's a pretty popular one for a really deep penetrating leather conditioner. And then on to Camberlanes. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it, but they sent me a couple samples last year of a few of their products. The first one is their healing balm. And the second one is their formula number one leather care liniment. So many words I don't know how to say. Okay, I just looked it up, it's Chamberlain. That's how you say it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, these are just some samples of the coasters we've been making that'll eventually end up on the site. We've been making these out of parts of the leather we can't make harnesses out of. It's a really good way for us to reduce some waste. It's similar to the, the bracelets that we've been giving away. But to uh, help this video out and uh, help incentivize you guys to help the channel out, we're gonna give away probably 10 sets of these coasters, including these ones that we're testing. So um, if you like, if you like the, the, the video and leave a comment, that will enter you to win and then we'll just comment to the winners. Most of our videos get like 15 likes, so the chances of you winning a coaster set is pretty good. So do me a favor and like and comment on this video. Now let's get to the testing. So first thing I'm gonna do is just put a little light squiggly scratch into each of the coasters and then a deeper scratch with three lines into all the rest of them. And then I'm gonna separate one just for a control and start with the mink oil, adding a pretty good amount. It's kind of an oily conditioner. And then onto the saddle soap. It's a lot, it was a lot harder to actually work that up than I thought and it, it left a little bit of a yellow residue. And then to the Aussie conditioner. This stuff is basically just like Vaseline, has the same consistency. And you can see it darkened up that veg tan really quite a bit right off the bat. Then onto Chamberlain's, it's it's similar to uh, the Aussie. It's, it's, it smells a lot like coconut, so it's probably coconut oil based. And then finally onto Chamberlain's number one. And it's a that's the this has been the lightest one out of all three of them. Um, it's more of like a a lotion texture, I would say. It absorbed into the leather a lot quicker. And now we'll do a little side by side comparison, starting with the mink oil. It absorbed pretty well into all the different leathers, um, but it still left a little bit of oily residue on top and it healed the scratches okay, but nothing special. Uh, saddle soap, it, it uh, left kind of a funny residue. You could, you could kind of feel the chalkiness on top and um, it didn't absorb all the way into all the different leathers, but it was, it was okay. Um, the Aussie oil, or the Aussie conditioner, this one was the one that was least absorbed. It was, it's really, really thick. It's kind of like a, a Vaseline texture. And then the healing balm, um, not, it, it's really similar to the mink oil. It, it left an oily residue or like a kind of a film on top, but absorbed better than the Aussie. And then to Chamberlain's leather milk, this one did pretty good. It absorbed fairly quickly and didn't change the color too much. And I think it, it healed the scratches the best out of all five of them. And now we're gonna move on to the, the water test after the conditioners have set in the leather 
and had enough time to dry as much as they can for this short of a video. And as you can see, there is definitely a difference in some of the conditioners. Some of them are having the, the water beat up and some of them like the leather milk didn't really do anything at all to protect the leather. Same story on the Dublin. The more oily ones, the waxier ones, they seem to, to protect the leather better. And the Chrome Excels, they're already pretty infused with fats and, and oils and stuff. So it, it, each of the conditioners didn't really do a whole lot because they're already really water resistant. And same with the black, not a whole lot of difference. And then for the side-by-side -side comparison, I didn't add the Chrome Excels because there really wasn't much of a difference. So first we're gonna start with the mink oil. Um, it protected it a little bit, um, but eventually it did make it into the leather. You can see some of the spots. The saddle soap um, didn't nearly protect it as well as the others, and it started to discolor the leather really bad. The Aussie conditioner, it did the best out of all of them, but it still, after a while, sunk into the leather. Chamberlain leather milk, or sorry, the, the healing balm, uh, similar to the, the mink oil. And then Chamberlain's leather milk, this one did the worst out of all of them. It didn't really do much of anything to protect the leather. And we'll take one more look at all the different uh, finishes. As for smell, um, I really liked the, the Healing Bomb by Chamberlain's. It, it smelled a lot like um, coconut. That was my personal favorite smell. And the flesh side didn't really matter for each one. They, it all kind of did the same thing. The flesh side wasn't that big of a difference. And as for how soon after you can use whatever product you're putting it on, the leather milk did by far the best. It was the fastest absorbing and didn't leave any really noticeable residue. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the side-by-side -side comparison. Um, it's hard to choose one for an overall best conditioner. If I were to choose one, I would probably choose Chamberlain's. It seemed like it's the best all around for a nice uh, conditioner that doesn't leave a really oily finish on top, but it still cleans and conditions the leather. And then again, it's like, depending on whatever application you're trying to use, one might be better over the other, but this is my personal favorite. So let me know what you think. If there's any other types of conditioners we didn't do in this test that you think I should test or something that I'm missing or something I didn't even think of, let me know and I'll maybe do another video.